ותן כי אף אבן יפאדה, ויעברו כנס אף פום לסליפ, which we never knew we would wake up from. And again, we are about to see another day that we may do the works that you sent us to do. Amen. Help us, O Lord, open our eyes, open our ears, open our minds, that we may really understand the times we are living in, that will help us, that will enable us to know that the end is nigh. Speak to us as we listen and give us, give the speaker the ability to talk about these things and explain them in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, where is that? Yeah, if we could slide where the way it was the first time. Brother Lambert will be uh there's someone is there someone who I can't put in such a bottle? Raise up your hand, please. If you don't have this bottle, raise up your hand. One, two, three. Have you seen the brother number two? Okay. No, no. Okay. Uh, in the in, uh, last presentation, we looked at Cain, who was given the power to rule over the children of darkness. And we saw his name was Anu. And Anu gave a map of power to his son, Marduk, who was Enoch. To, and builded him a city, and they were dwellers in the cities, yet God's people dwelt in tents. So the children of disobedience were, we saw that they were, they were, they had a mark of power, which we saw as they like this, the same mark of, of, of the other side of the children of obedience. They had the mark of the Sabbath, that showed their obedience, yet with the, with the children of disobedience, they had a, a, a mark of the sun as the symbol of the, of the authority given to, to them, that when they worship, through worshiping this sun, or worshiping on the day of the sun, they would render obedience to their God. And we saw that he, uh, they all had it, and, and we also saw that Enoch said, said that, I mean, Lamed, mad with two wives, evil was spreading, and he also killed a man and, and said that Cain would be, if Cain would be avenged seven, seven times, sevenfold, then Lamed. 70 and 7, and we saw what that was about, but they, were, they will work towards until the close of probation. And that was explained very well in the night, that Satan knows he has that a short time. So they were working towards their period of, 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 of ending of time. We also saw the book of Enoch, which is causing havoc today, and we saw that that book is, is, was brought out by the descendants of Rome, the descendants of that mindset, in order to deal with, to destroy many things that today pertain to time. Because Satan knows there's a little time. So by bringing out this book, and it has a lot of uh, hallucinations and visions and dreams that we saw, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in, in that presentation, then everyone will not know what time they are living in. And Satan 
can really take them by surprise. And even the kingdom of God may come upon them by surprise. And we also saw, remember we know that the Bible says, if you don't watch, I'll come unto thee as a thief. And when the thief comes upon you, surely you will not know until they have taken everything in the house. We know what that means. So we have to, that's why we need to study history. The study of history that should not be condemned and are supposed to know how God deals with the nations that will usher in the, the, the end of the conflict. That is what we, in summer we had in the first presentation, in the first half. So let's go on and see where this leads. If you go to a, a book called Secret Doctrine, is there a way that thing can do? That this one here can go up there. Right. Oh, my. That book is called Secret Doctrine. It's one of the, the high books in the occult. They have a lot of them. They have, we shall, we shall be coming across them, Secret Teaching of All Ages, why it explains the history of, 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 of Islam, how we are connected to the stone. We shall go through all this. The, the, it also explains how the, the Magi, uh, the, the people who used to, to come with, oh, sorry, I'm supposed to be. No, no, no. Okay, it's a fine. Yeah? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So they, ex they even explain how the biology developed, how physics developed, how all the scientific uh, things came into existence. Uh, that, that, that book is so much pertaining to them. But this one, it's a synthesis of science, religion, and philosophy. So basically, they show how they, they mingle all this together to develop a given, that's why it's called the secret doctrine of the ancient time. And this, I'll go to read from volume one. There are two volumes, but we can't read all of it. We don't have time to read all, all the occult stuff. We have a lot of stuff to read from the spirit of prophecy and the word of God. But I'm just going there just to, to show you there are some things which we don't have and they're in the world, and many people have taken them to be Christian, but we want to know where they come from, just for that sake. That but I'm not saying you go there and read these books. They are filled with nonsense, and they're filled with a lot of witchcraft. That you, 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 some people wouldn't dare to expose themselves to. It, and the symbol, you notice the symbol there, it is the same one that we find in the medical fraternity. Uh, but we shall get to that. It says, once the key of Genesis is in our hands, it is the scientific and symbolic Kabbalah which are the very disciplined. So they will not explain Genesis from the perspective of the Bible, but they will take Genesis and they will use the, the symbolic and scientific Kabbalah to explain Genesis. This is going to get fascinating. That great serpent of the Garden of Eden and the Lord God identity. Now that's a secret doctrine. The, this, this, the serpent of the Garden of Eden and the Lord God are identical. In other words, the Lord God, whom we know, according to them, is the serpent. So they take things upside down. And, and so are Jehovah in one. So to them, Jehovah is Cain. That Cain is referred to in theology as the mother and the lion to God. Jehovah came to king of, of Israel and to number the people. And Satan takes sin to do the same for another place. Jehovah turns into the three serpents to bite God's. He is displeased with, and Jehovah in whom the present serpent feels there. Are you seeing the way they understand things? Hello? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. These short and seemingly contradictory statements in the Old Testament 
contradictory because the two powers are separated instead of being regarded as two senses of one and the same thing. So in the occult, light and darkness must coexist in order to have truth. So you cannot, have you heard people who say, you cannot have light except if there was darkness. Are you getting the point? Mm -hmm. So now that's darkness and light must coexist in order to know that one is true. In fact, they go on to say, who was the first one? Wasn't it the darkness? In the beginning, there was, uh, 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 in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. The earth was without form, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. So to them, the darkness was first, and light was developed out of the darkness. So according to their interpretation of the Kabbalah, which is also what it means, it is the darkness that came first, not the light. And the light was developed from the darkness, so therefore, it is the darkness that brings birth to the light not the light that chases away the darkness or the light was passed. To them, it is the darkness that was passed. Because in this one, now Lucifer or the, uh, Satan would be the supreme being because darkness is passed. And they go on to explain, but those who have faith in the occult teaching believe that in the days of old, there were such creatures as blind dragons. So to the, the, the so-called dragon tales that are given to kids in, 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 in cartoons, dragon tales, dragon tales, the dragon comes and, and the kids go on it and it flies them somewhere. And now dragons have become a common thing. Kids can play with the dragons, but we know what a dragon means, isn't it? But now today, kids can play with dragons, and the, the dragon is some good thing that comes and helps the kids and can get fire out of its mouth and, and burn the enemies and all these things. Uh, all a kind of pterodactyl, uh, and that is those giant winged wizards, lizards that served as the footprint for the setup of Moses and his great brazen serpent. So in the temple of, now those of you who have ever heard of the temple of Solomon, there are two temples that are spoken about. Now, in, when you go to the Quran, when you go to the Quran, you notice that the Quran says it was the, the jinns that built the temple of Solomon. Now the temple of Solomon is different from the temple that was built for the worship of God, of Solomon. That temple is different, and that's where many of these occult stuff take place. Many will confuse them, just as we confuse Enoch of, of Cain and the Enoch of Seth. I will, I will together. Hello? Yes, I will. Uh, uh, let's, let's move together. The Jews had worship. The later, the later, the latter idol the, themselves, but after religious reform brought about by Hezekiah, uh, turned around and called the symbol of the great or higher god of every other nation a devil. So it is Hezekiah who called the, the idol god they worshipped as devil, but he was the right one. Are you, are you getting what I'm trying to explain? I am, we are in the oak house, how they think. It's not what is right, but I'm showing you how they develop this doctrine that it is the idol which they used to worship, where, where God commanded Hezekiah to bring a reform, to them was the correct one, and Hezekiah named the, he the devil, but to them it is their supreme God. Are you getting the point now? Hello? Okay. The alteration, in fact, they said, and called him a devil, and they are all who suffer, the one God. So for them, is their one God. The alteration of Satan, in Hebrew, Satan of uh, an adversary, from the verb Satan to be adverse, 
to perfect it, belongs by right to the first and the truest and the last of the all of God, the whole. Are we there now? So to the opout, who is the Satan, the adversary? God. So the God of heaven, Yahweh, is the, is the uh, Satan, the adversary, the enemy of man. I want us to understand that this is the mindset of the world. So we are going to, there are two battles, there's a battle, and there are two sides, each of them teaches that the other one is a supreme God. No. They say that he is the adversary, belongs to the first and first adversary of all other gods, their own. Not to the serpents, which spoke only words of sympathy and wisdom, and is at the worst, even in the dogma, the adversary of men. So the serpent is not the adversary. It is Jehovah, who is the adversary and the cruelest enemy of man. And the Lucifer comes from, him out from that adversary. Are you getting the point? Yes. Their mindset. The consonant, who is named in the first four chapters of Genesis, variously as God, the Lord God, and Lord simply is not one and the same person. Excuse me, I bet that. So to them, God, the Lord, the Lord God is not the same person. Now, I, the reason, I want you to understand this. That where we are going, the battle that we are having between who God is already is shown in this one. That's a good thing that you study the other side, and then we study the other side. So we saw the mindset that we developed here, and now we are seeing seeing the other side as well. And Lord simply is not one and the same person. Certainly, it is not Jehovah. There are three distinctive classes of groups of Elohim. What? I got that. Elohim. Uh, excuse me. They are what? Three what? Things. Where have you ever heard of that? Exactly. Where are we reading this from? Focus. The occult teachings of the world. And the name of Elohim and called Sephiroth in the Kabbalah, Jehovah appeared in England in chapter 4, in the first of, of which is named Cain, and in the last class of the two mankind, male and female, Yahweh. Now, first point a little bit. To in the occult, male and female refers to the parts and names of God. So male female is not physically male female. You're going to notice that when they say here male female, they will, if you continue and notice, if you continue reading, you will notice that it is Cain and Abel in the occult. Male female is is a, is an acronym for Cain and Abel because he made them male and female. Adam refers to the first set of beings, then Eve refers to the next set of beings in the next generation, then Cain and Abel refers to the male and female. Question, if male and female refers to Cain and Abel, then what is marriage? No, no, no. There is a word we can give. Homosexuality. Homosexuality. Do you get the point? Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. So if male and female refers to Cain and Abel, then Cain married who? Abel. And in fact, they will go on and tell you to read on that Abel, the Cain killing Abel, he did not kill him physically. He just got some blood. They took some blood from him as a symbol of marriage. So Cain killing Abel, it meant they were married. So question. The first people, what were they? Homosexuals, according mm -hmm. to the Kabbalah. 
Do you see where the problems we have come from? Hello? Yes. The serpent moreover is not Satan, but the bright angel, one of Elohim lost in righteousness and glory, who promised to the woman that if they ate of the forbidden fruit, he shall not surely die, kept his promise, and made man immortal in his incorruptible nature. How do you like that? I want to. I, you know, do you see the battle we have? You know, we can talk around and think this is a game. But this is the mindset we are, we are going to face in the world as we take the word of God. They have another interpretation of scripture. If you go to the LGBT, they have got in the scriptures that support from, the, from their theology. And we have... We have been sent by God to counteract all that nonsense. How much study of the word of God do we need to do? Nothing. Hello? Hello? Therefore, the power of God by the Muslims, the creator of and one which uh, of form the force, the serpent, Satan, or evil. And why is this found? The book is called Isis and very soon written by uh, Bravasti. She was the wife of a high Freemason, as you shall see, uh, who, who wrote, Hereda Petrovna Bravasti wrote in the same time as Eleanor. And her successor became, was uh, Alice Ebeiri. So Alice Ebeiri has a whole right book catalog of writings which you, which are the exactly same as Ellen White's writings. Two women, still women, are writing at the same time. Doesn't that fascinate you? That in the author already two, a woman started writing as Ellen White is writing in the same period of time, 1844. She, she's writing. When she died, she picked a successor, Alice A. Bailey, and have a whole catalog, and it's called the Lucy's Trust, but it was originally called the Lucifer Trust, or Lucifer Publishing House, but later became Lucy's Trust. So you have Ellen White Estate, and you have Lucifer Estate. Is there a war? Is there a war? Absolutely. So whether they like it or not, there is a war. A woman is writing, a woman is writing. Satan knows he will always fight to, to, to the end. And where do they take you? They, they talk, uh, Adonai, uh, the names of Jehovah, Jehovah, who is uh, in an emanation of uh, El Baho according to the Codex Nazaria. So again, you notice that the Codex they have are from the Apocrypha or they called the hidden books, because the word apocrypha in Greek means hidden from the masses, only to the initiates, if you would like. Okay, let us come from that. Now, the world, we have seen their mindset, and that is what they teach their children, they, so that teaching was all scattered in their mindsets. Time comes, the sons of God, now we, we move to Genesis, where evil is increasing, and the children of disobedience are over multiplying because they're marrying two wives, three, what, 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 killing, evil on the other side is, uh, is increasing. And we come to Genesis chapter 6, and the children of disobedience and the children of obedience marry. In the, in the, in the antitype, we know that the, 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 the sons of God would come with the, with the mindsets, those who believe God will come and join and think that these people are fair. You see, the Pentecostals also worship God. You see, the Muslims, 
have something in common with Adventists. They both don't eat pork. No sense. You eat nothing. They eat for us. We eat nothing. We don't eat any cadaver. So they are looking for common points because the word fair is there. That the word fair represents 50 50. When we look at them, they are not bad. See, they also worship God, they read the Bible, only that they don't understand Him so well. But that's the difference is the Sabbath may be, but fair. Say, are you getting my point? And what is the result? Inter religion. I think uh, it's not even worse for a Sabbath keeper to marry a Sunday keeper. It is worse for a Seventh-day Adventist in the most holy place to marry a Seventh-day in the holy place. Because we are told that Satan assumed the, 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 the seat of the priest in the holy place. <laughs> it's more worse because it is war every day. So I have a different point. So if you go deeper, an Adventist marrying an ad, a, a so-called because an Adventist by now, where is she living? Most in the most holy. So any other Adventist, not in the most holy, it's more dangerous than a Sunday king. That one is more dangerous than a Sunday keeper. Because Satan. Satan in, in sheep's clothing is more dangerous yeah. than the black one out there. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got the point? Mm -hmm. He's all Satan, but this one is more deceptive. Yeah. Because you can think you are safe, yeah. yet you are in the, in, in the worst hand. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we know God said we not strive with man, and the wickedness of man was much. And there comes the flood, and God destroys all of them. But the mindset of the children of evil never ended there. Because there was intermarriage, we find the mindset of the children of Cain coming into the ark as well. So they were in the ark. These people were justified. They entered into the ark. They believed and entered into the earth. But they had the mindset of the other side. That is why after the flood, the mindset again was spread. And, and there comes a man called Nimrod, as you can see in the picture here, of course, with a very attire of, of, of the children of disobedience, as you saw them, of Anna. And Claudius the Shippers will, uh, Claudius the Shippers will, will tell us in his book, uh, what, uh, the book of the Jewish Antiquities, he will tell us this. Now it was Nimrod who excited them for, to such an action and contempt of God. He was the grandson of Ham, the son of Noah, a bold and great strength of Ham. He persuaded them not to ascribe it to God, as if it were to do his will, God is me, that they were happy. But to believe that it was their parents that procured that happiness. Is that a war against God? Are we together? Yes. Self what? Righteousness. We are the ones that have secured this. It is not God. Don't, don't attribute it to God. We, we did it. Do we see the same mindset today? When we say we can over, we can chase our poverty among people. There's something, let us come and, and do it. And if you, you, you read what Nimrod did, he, he really brought, brought his people together by convincing them that it was easier when we come together, build something that will make us a name. So people came willingly, looking that that's a good thing. Just as the current name wrote, the Pope doing it and moving around the world, gathering all nations and calling them 
And they, they see it as something, mm, you know what it means to fight AIDS? Ah, uh -uh. Adventists, don't you have diseases as well? What is wrong with coming together to fight disease? Ah, uh -uh, don't you have this and this and this? It looks to, to, to the blind, to the sleeping, it looks so nice. It's a good thing. And everyone will move into the bandwagon. So they can, but what they do? He graduated, he also graduated, changed the government into a tyranny. By the way, when you read Greek mythology or, or Greek philosophy, the next, the next level, just before you reach tyranny, the, the, the level before you reach tyranny is called democracy. Democracy is the next level before you reach the highest tyranny. So if tyranny is the highest, then the next one is called democracy. How does it operate? If you are to, co to bring tyranny, first cause a lot of disorder and havoc. Give people democracy to choose whatever they want, the rule of the majority. So they do, they do, they do, everyone chooses as they want. This one packs here, the other one packs there, the other one do here, the other one do that. There's total chaos. Just as it is in Uganda. Everyone does what he wants, he builds anywhere, they have to, they have to place him there, the other than doing this, brother, does it, everything. Then you wake up one and say, to end all of this chaos, we need a tyrant. Someone who doesn't listen to anyone's ideas and he will end all this nonsense. Have you understood how it works? Yes. So in order to bring tyranny, start with what? Democracy. What do you, the majority, what do you think we should do? How many are second it and all of them put up their hands? There's chaos, and then you can come down and put things in order. You should put the government with children, seeing no other method of turning what? Men. Men from the fear of God. But to bring them in, in a constant dependence on his own power. So, don't you think what the Pope is doing is exactly what Nimrod did? Right. And what is the same mindset is brought into church and we have all you, a, a union. Everything we do it, what happens in, in Guru should be the same exactly as, as in Kapala. What happens in that church should be exactly what should be in that church. If we decide that this should be happening here, it should be the same. Why do you depreciate and do your own stuff? Then everyone whose mind is duped into believing that this is what, but the man is driving you to something he wants. And that is, that, that is very dangerous. Yeah, we are bringing okay. about this. Yes. So, the, what you are seeing today in, in, in the churches that think they are Jews, as Revelation puts it, that they, they are those who call themselves Jews, yet they are the synagogues of Satan. Exactly the mindset of the synagogue of Satan is moving into the Jewish car, and, and many cannot see that it is Satan. Wow. Now, what do they talk about Nimrod in Father Sasa? You can see these characteristics. Uh, these are all books uh, like Arthur Edward White, the New Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. He will tell you that uh, as regards masonry, Babel, of course, represents a Masonic enterprise. So the Tower of Babel was a Masonic enterprises, uh, enterprise. And uh, we have Masons here. The word Mason, they were originally called builders. Builders of what? Of the Temple of Solomon, <coughs> the other one. So they were called Frere Mason in French, but it couldn't, it can, it can come, it can in brother, brotherly 
builder. One is the, my brother trying to build the kingdom or the temple. Now, for us, we are lively stones that are built upon spiritual house. a spiritual house, isn't it? Yes. But for them, they are the ones that are building. They are not built. They are building a kingdom, a temple for themselves. And what, you know, you have to know your Bible very well in order to discern. Ellen White tells us that in the end, truth, will, truth and error will be so close that only those of the Spirit of God and are acquainted with the scriptures will be able to distinguish the two. And if you go to Messenger in Saxon in England, they'll tell you it is well known that the town of Babel was one of the most ancient traditions of Masonry. So they are the builders, the constructors, the, 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 the architects. Of course, that's why they use a compass and a square. And uh, the, the, of course, in order to draw a compass, uh, to draw in a circle or a triangle, of course, you need a compass and a square, which is, we, we shall come to that in, in the future. What? Uh, and then, so here the thing I'm saying, Lord, he was the grandson of God who start to have been the founder of Babylon, the first king and the first conqueror. So, what is the Pope knows, which is true, but I'm just, why if he knows that he is now the king who must come out of the bottomless pit and he, he has to raise up his kingdom afresh? He's not. He has lost, he lost all the simple powers he wants to bring up, and he has to do it in a Nimrod way. So the events we are going to look at will be all leading us to, to, show, to show us that really what we are, the days we are living in, the Tower of Babel is coming back. Just as the presenters were showing us, that the Tower of Babel exactly is what we are coming to. Now, we go to Egypt to see this very mindset as well. Uh, here was the a, a Pharaoh. According to the Bible, it was Tat Moses III who was the Pharaoh of the Exodus. But when you watch movies like uh, Ten Commandments, you notice that they'll tell you it was uh, Ramses III. It wasn't Ramses III. It was Tat Moses the third. Why? Because when you go into into in Egypt, in the great in the in the, in the tomb of Tat Moses the third, what is fascinating that under there there is a mummy. There is a mummy of 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 of, of Tat Moses the third. But the Bible tells us that the Pharaoh and all. His army died in this. All Pharaoh and his army all died in the sea that day. But when you go to the tomb, there is a mummy of a dead Pharaoh. But when you go inside, you notice that there are there, there, there are uh, writings on the walls of priests casting, throwing their stone, their stems or stuffs down and the stuffs are turning into a serpent in the tomb of that mother star. What does that tell you? Who was the pharaoh of the Exodus? Cadmus is the third. He was the pharaoh of the Exodus. And this was the mightiest pharaoh in ever in Egypt, but died in the sea when he was pursuing God's people. He was both a king and the priest, because he was raised by the priest, the priests of Amun. Amun is the god of the moon, the chief god, the deity in Egypt. Though that is also the sun god called Ra. So he was the chief one, and they, he read, they raised him as a priest and a king. Today we have someone who is a, a priest and a king at the same time. Absolutely. The Pope of Rome. And he will die, and he, he, will, he will be destroyed as he pursues God's people in the final conflict. So we are 
we are, we are on the very line, as you can tell that. And this man is down here, holding the whole Assyrian army in his hand. He was mighty, as you can see. He has gathered all the armies of the world today, just in his hands like this. He has the Arabic world, he has America, he has Africa, all of them are in his hands. But there's one army he cannot hold, the army of God. He cannot hold them. Though he gathers all his army, he cannot manage the army of God. And he said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? What does that sound like in history? Who said, who had such a mindset? Such a Cain. Cain had the same mindset. He said, oh, am I my brother's keeper? And his great-great-great-great-great-great-grandson comes with the same mindset and says, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? Who is he? Same mindset. They don't know God. Uh -huh. What did he do? And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye Moses and Aaron let people from their works? Get you unto your body. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and ye make them rest from their body. Five, four, to five. So he made Moses told them to rest, and that one part of the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh had to chase them, and he made them to have the Sabbath, to keep the Sabbath. So, was the Sabbath as they were leaving Egypt an issue? Yes. It was. Do you think in this coming one, will, will the Sabbath still be the issue? Absolutely. The Spirit of Prophet tells that. So, you see, with this side, it is evident. With this side, it is evident. Same thing. So, we are, we are very right. On trial. So let's now look the same mindset with the Assyrian. They were brutal. Pharaoh mingled the blood of the children of the Israelites when he killed, when he wanted to kill baby Jesus, I mean Moses. Same thing with Herod. And here we see the same mindset. He destroys, he, kill, he makes them slaves, his bonds many. The, the, he kills them and murders them. Comes to Syrians, they have the mindset. As Cain did, he's still able. Uh, uh, the Pharaoh does the same thing. The Assyrians have the same mindset. These were the great men of, of, of the Assyrians. And they were very interested in decapitating people. And you see how they dealt with dissenters. If you were dissenter, or someone who went against any of what they did. They were very brutal. Look at how they could deal with them. Uh, they could rip, tie them, rip up the flesh, cut off their heads. They, 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 could, they, could, they could remove your eyes. They put hooks through your noses. They could uh, put you up there. And, you know, <clears throat> look at all of this. This is how brutal these guys were. When you when you, you you are not in harmony with what they say, and the Bible tells us about Manasseh in Second Chronicles thirty three, and the Lord spoke to Manasseh and he, and these people, but they did not happen. When you call the Lord, when the most of the king of Assyria, we took Manasseh among the thorns and. Bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. So, where are they? Do they have the same mindset? Now, why did God take Manasseh? Because Manasseh had the mindset of them. He would not listen to God. Then God said, Fine, if you don't listen to me, then let me handle you to the people who have your same mindset and you see what they do to you. They are sevenfold. They are sevenfold brutal than, than, than you can ever imagine. My laws are simple. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But for them, if you ever commit adultery, stones. Which one, which one is gracious? 
If you if you do run to a city of refuge, go there and repent. By this one, if you are caught, stones. Which one has salvation in it? Think what you want. So then they took medicine. They they put hooks through his nose. His, uh, Zedekiah, they removed his eyes, dragged them to Babylon. Every time God's people have the same mindset of Babylon, he gives them to the Babylonians. <laughs> okay, you go to where you belong, and you will see what happens to you. Same thing. The mindset then from the Babylonians, we go to Middle Persians, from the Middle Persians to who? Rishi. To the Greece, uh, from Greece to Rome. So did the Romans have the same mindset? Exactly. What if you went if you were at the center, what did they do to you? They drink the land. These people are causing chaos, they follow Jesus, the lions. They don't think that. What is wrong with following someone? Throw it to the land. Someone Cain was wrong when people when when his brother did what was right, even here, they are wrong. And they could give it animals if it was they were, they were very, very brutal. They even had they could cut off your parts and they could they, they could remove the organs. By the way, do we have today in in the in the out uh and in, in the wizards of this world, do they also remove parts of people? They have been legalized. It, it, it is legal now to remove parts of anyone, that already tells you where we are heading. The mindset is too much coming to in, into in, in your eye. So now it, by the way, by then it was called post-mortem. <laughs> Excuse me, someone is dead. And all evidence shows that he's dead. Then why are you taking the body? So we can define post-mortem not as not discovering what killed the person, but taking out a useful organ that can be given to the children of Cain that they may live longer in their sins. That is my term. Don't take it. Out. That is the way I understand it. According to me, it is mine. I'm not supposed to call it. Okay. Now let's see. Who, who are the successors now of the Roman? That Roman mindset. And that who carried it on or it ended with the Roman? Luther have to tell us the victories of Rome were not recorded by the numbers of the slaves or the greatness of the spoils, but the kingdoms that were taken by the nations that were conquered, by the islands and continents that were added to the vastness of their empire. And out of the ruins of the Roman Empire, there gradually arose a new order of state whose central point was the papacy. So the, again, the papacy, the, this mindset is moved now to religion. So he is both church and state. He comes in. And they are going to live with the result of the papacy, not only new, but very different from the former. And the Encyclopedia Britannica will tell us about the, art, the article of the Roman Catholic Church. It appears that the numbers of Christians had by this time grown sufficiently to alarm the government. Did the, did the number of Christians uh, of the Jews alarm Egypt? Yes. Yes, isn't it? Does this to repeat itself? No. Isn't it? There's nothing new under the sun. Seem to recognize that Christianity would be stupid. If it destroyed what? Paganism. Are you seeing that the world is, is very afraid if Christianity would ever, truth, would ever destroy paganism, they are finished? And that's why they have to deal with every Christian, with, with the truth, because it will destroy paganism and they will, they will be gone. They did not go as that Christianity would reach a compromise with the empire that will become Roman. So Constantine was told by 
Which man? Which man told Constantine how to mingle the two in order for him to continue? Simon Mega. He told him the sorcerer of Neville, who got baptized, wanted to buy the Holy Spirit in Acts. And this man taught him how things can continue. And they mingled the two, and things went on. And the book, Libya Dan, page 57 tells us. If a man considers the origin of this great ecclesiastical dominion, he will easily perceive that the person is none other than the ghost of the deceased Roman Empire sitting down upon the grave of the earth. And the succession of the seasons. La Vian the succession of the Caesar came the succession of the pontiffs in Rome. This is a professor of history, in fact, a Jesuit. He tells you very well what happened. When Constantine left Rome, he gave his seat to the body. And Revelation tells us openly the dragon who, who was then. The seat and power. Yes. The dragon by then was a Roman state, okay. the secular pagan Rome, gave his seat to who? People Rome. His seat, authority, and what? Power. Of power and authority, he gave all of them to the Pope. Tell me this: the Pope knew the place of the vacant as Rome. What is they inherited? So it was inherited. So the, is there a line of succession? Yes. So for, for us, are we saved by succession? No, no, no. No, there's nothing like that. We simply have to believe. But here it is a line, and today. The same thing is, is called apostolicity. In, in Christian churches, what we call apostolicity, that you have to be, in order to be a pastor, you must be in the line of the pastors. You have to go through what the, the system which they have designed. That's what we call apostolicity. So you cannot be an ordained minister, except the ordained minister, according to the apostolic Understanding has ordained him. Yet the word ordaining is a simple word which means set apart for special purpose. Mm -hmm. If we just sit here and say, uh, Brother Lambert, we'll, we, have, we have decided that you go and represent us in such and such a place, we have ordained him and we have to pray for him and we have set him apart. Yes. Full stop. But to them, the ordained can, can only come from the ordained. So it's a succession. That's what our. Oh. And then he sat on the throne. And the American Catholic Court will tell you that long ages ago when Rome took place of the Western Emperor to address to the party of the barbarous court, the Romans stand to one figure for aid and protection. And that's for him to rule them. And thus commenced the temple sovereignty of the popes. Now listen to this. And nimbly stepped into the throne of who? Caesar. Caesar. Yeah, we are going to find in the next in the next lectures, we're going to find some interesting thing that even COVID was attached to Caesar. It's fascinating that Caesar is still attached to all the events that are going on. The vita of what? The scepter to which the emperors and kings of Europe were to what? To bow in reverence to so many ages. So every king of the world has to bow. This was the king of, of, of the German, one of the Germanic tribes, and refused to acknowledge the Pope. He was given a position to stand in the snow barefooted for 10 hours until he recognized the Pope is his dream. In fact, in the Middle Ages, it was worse. A king would be taken and stripped naked and beaten canes by the monks for not for not accepting the Pope as his leader. So you had to be subordinate to this power. So the title Pontifex Maximus was taken. Pontif X Pontif means hmm? Pontifex Maximus means basically the supreme great builder. Pontif Pontifs. The Pontifices Council was a council which elected Caesar, but it was made up of priests. That, that is in Rome. So the one who was topmost was called the Pontifex Maximus. 
the one who is the greatest build, bridge builder among them. But they were all bridge builders, but the, the top of them, Pontifex, Maxim. And everyone, can you notice? The, this is the ancient Romans that they had uh, the, the same. Uh, this is Octavius, who, who became Caesar Augustus. That's his, you know, these are titles. Augustus Caesar, but if your name was Octavia, Pontifex Maximus, if you go to these popes, uh, Jean Paul II, that is his, his name, but it is long, I cannot even pronounce it. Vex and Propostal, I don't know even how to pronounce it. And behind is what? Pontifex Maximus. Pontifex Maximus. And what is that? The sun, the symbol of power given to the children of disobedience to rule over the disobedience. He has the son there. And today, this is his money. The euro is the Pope's very money. Why? Because it has what? The bridge. What does a bridge symbolize? Pontifex Maximus. He's the bridge what? Builder. So, as, so this is the bridge builder. Then the euro is his currency, whatever shape they put in. We define that the whole apostolic see and the Roman Pontic both stream at him over the whole world. So he has to gain tyranny and be on top, then he can now control all of them. So once you become a president, you must go and meet the map to receive instructions of how to rule. Whether you come from Russia, whether you come from anywhere, you have to go and see that man. So, and you sit down and you tell him. That is from Palestine. You have to sit and talk to him. And you bring him. Whether you come from Russia, it doesn't matter. Because we have to scream at them over the whole world. And you have to take photos because this is evidence that you have ever been here. We don't want your country to ever say we do, you don't know. We have to hold evidence and you even sign in the books. You see, and the rest of the discussion is private. That is good. That is legitimate. And even Putin himself, when they come from Russia, when they come from Ukraine, it doesn't matter. He is the man in the charge of all of them. So you stand at the same position, you go there and you see it. And you have to wear black and a little white. Because he is the white and you are all black. Not black in the color like okay. It is the idea of uh, certain being the light bearer. Yes, so it's the light now, you are all black or darkness. She is a light. So you have to come to him as a light. So he is now the Lucifer, which you have read from the other. So if the Lucifer is female, uh, doesn't she have any other clothes to put on other than black? But because there's a law, the other, the, the other man is a cheap one, you see and instructed in what you are supposed to do. Whether you come from America, it doesn't matter whether for him he doesn't care because you are just altar boys. You are nothing. You don't matter to him as long as you feel feel what he wants. And you will meet him, and then you will sit in the very seat and you will be instructed. And fascinatingly, you notice there's something I want to see. Well, because many people think America is so great, and we shall see in the future. Are you focusing here? No, no, no. Okay. I like this smile. It's very sarcastic. And when you see it, it there's just something that I want to see to show you how this man humbles himself before them. You even get a, an opportunity of sitting on the white chair. 
with the white one. And we have to be very humble before the man and instruct him. Look at how humble he is. Look at him. These are men who think they are very powerful, but before the other one, you are nothing. Because this is the supreme key of, of the mindset of pain. So, whether you come from uh, Elizabeth, I won't do that one because of time. Uh, who is that? Uh, Whether you come from Africa, that one is from Kenya. I all of them have to put on black. If I'm ever if I'll ever be called to Rome, I will put on green. <laughs> so they bring even gifts and they are also given gifts. So he takes all of them before him. And this one is interesting that he is called, called a seven adverts. Did you know that? Yeah. From Zambia. And he also just weeks after his whatever here, the man had to go to Rome. He said, No, oh, cannot speak in the politics. And you don't bow down to the mindset of the children of Cain. Who are the rulers of evil? Who have received the mark of rulership? That's why we cannot be part of that. So they have to go everywhere. And now, since we are in the age of, uh, it has come now, it became a new mindset, you know? And putting on the mask, which is absolutely ridiculous, but they had to force it upon the people. Whether you come from Kigali, it doesn't matter. You have to go to the Supreme Man and he instructs you. And by the way, some of this done with the soldiers, but then the way they escort them, the, the, the soldiers. <laughs> yes, but then we have to work as, as soldiers, as general, to, to, to achieve the general. So does it matter where you come from? Hello? No. It doesn't. <laughs> Many of you think that this, uh, this one is going to go. These are tyrants who, who make their, king, their kingdoms really brutal, but they have the brutal, the most brutal one. And the one that is still pontifex Maximus and the seats so on the same one. Okay, let's go to Uganda as well. <laughs> Such that when, when, yes, many people may think we are. Not everyone goes, but whether it doesn't matter whichever part you come from, some may say, Ah, uh -uh, you are showing others, but there is the man as well. <laughs> he has to appear before the throne of his chief. So, so who is the instructor of all? He is. Now you may think this guy is a what, but he also is sub subservient. So it doesn't matter where you go, and there we see another one. Even the prime minister, they have to go and they receive as well what as a gift. And there again, you see, even they had to, she had to be called to Rome to talk about the anti gay bill. In fact, the Pope said it is an, a nice law 
but you have to tighten it to, to lighten a bit the, the the punishments. Yes, it is good, you know, he plays both sides. He doesn't tell you are wrong. Neither are you right. So what are you? So and and said that uh, Miss Amon Pop Frank has gave has again granted the private audience to Uganda Speaker of Parliament, and is among the head of the, uh, among whose meeting with the head of the Catholic Church comes to the back drop of Uganda's fallout with the several Western countries over the passing of the Nathagate homosexual, homosexual act that saw the Speaker slept with the tribal, tribal power. According to the diplomat, uh, yes. not in Latin, not Verbere issued by the Apostolic Nuncio Chap, which is the, the Vatican representative in residing in in Buya, uh, in the Federal, Federal Republic of Germany, the official of the Speaker of the Parliament of Uganda, the meeting took place on August 25th, 2023. When was when was this? On Friday. Yes, that's that's fine. Fine. Just as The meeting took place. So are we are we in time? Are we in time? It's amazing that uh, the speaker was banned from uh, having a Pope. travel ban, but the Pope could issue so the, the speaker was banned from travel, but the Pope can give a can give her to travel. Mugabe was banned from from moving, but when the Pope was called him, Mugabe was granted access to travel and go to Rome. What I tell you? The man is <laughs> So everyone can ban you, but not him. So who is the owner of the entire power to rule over the children of that religion? It is him. And he is the vicar of the incarnate son of God, and even the high priest, and the supreme temple ruler, sat in this tribe in person to judge between nation and nation, between the people and the bridge, between the sovereign and God. So is he the judge? Is he the judge? So you can be the one to judge now. You, Russia, you have done wrong. I think Ukraine at that point, but again, Ukraine. You should do this. And then and then now Saudi Arabia do this. He's the judge, he's the one to direct what it's, a, it's supposed to be done. So who has the authority and who has the mark of the power of the children of disobedience? Who has it? The pontiff. Such like affairs as well, and then had power. To what? The charge made by divine rights of this case, the proper of what? Heretics. They imprison their persons and condemn them to the flames. So you, they even have the right to confiscate your property and condemn you to the flames. Why? Because they have gone against us. Did, did Nebuchadnezzar have such power? Absolutely. Did Cain have such power? Did he condemn his brother to death and executed him? Nebuchadnezzar did the same thing. All the kings had the same power. The Romans had the same power. Exactly he has the church. Now it has become religion, not basically state. So the church has the power to condemn you and use the state to execute its will. Do you know where we are going? The state can receive authority from the church to execute you. Did you. Do you know that we can be seated here? And the church goes and tells the state that those people are there by, the, 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 that meeting is not authorized by us, and they're using our name. Therefore, they are, they're not part of us, the recognized one. Please execute them, and we can all be arrested. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. And Rome has this 
uh, we can see what they did to the to the reformers, that is Bush, and the the ones that were given to carry out this were, of course, the Jesuit order, the Society of Jesus, and we are in the territory where they we are now residing in the territory where they they are tra trained because the school is in Guru here. Yes, I was there. I've ever seen the place, and it is a, it is really a, an interesting one. They are everywhere. Today, the Jesuits cannot be known as they were known then. Today, things have changed. The Jesuits are good people. They are good schoolmasters. They build hospitals. But is that their real character? This is in the church, the church of the Gezi in Rome. They have their own church. There is the church. And what sign do you see there? That's a sign of Anne given to Marduk. So they have the sign to rule over children of disobedience. And if you bow before the power of the sun, you are bowing before them. <laughs> Did you know that this back symbol, as we shall see, is the very symbol that is put in every nation to show subservience? Every nation must show subservience by having that symbol as important. Question, I want you to focus up there. What do you see there? <laughs> what is that? So what do you think that tells wrong? <laughs> it is a reminder to all Ugandans that you are subservient to someone who has that symbol. And that's why it is in the center of the whole coat of arms. And I, when this was bought, the coat of arms, there was, there, there is a man who composed the song. And it is, uh, uh, it is interesting that that song is exactly in line with that and that. We grew up singing this song that you have no clue to what they mean. The song says, Oh Uganda, may God uphold thee. Now listen to the literature very well. Oh Uganda, may God uphold who? Who is the V? Uganda. Oh, I follow you. Oh, Uganda. May God uphold you, Uganda. Isn't it? We lay our future in thy hands. Whose hands? Huh? According to the literature, whose hands do we lay our future? In Uganda's hands. Now, who holds Uganda's hands? Who his future and Uganda's hand? No. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me take it back. We, the who? The people of Uganda, we let our future in Uganda's hands. But the independence monument has someone holding a what? You can, you can get out your money. And look at the infamous moment. There is a, a, a woman holding a, a child. It is not a symbol of Mother, mother Uganda holding you. It is a symbol of Mother Rome holding Uganda as a child. It's basically that what it means. So all Uganda, may God uphold thee. We lay our future in thy hands. And the next word is very interesting. United. Free for liberty. Who has those words everywhere? But to, for liberty, together, we will always stand. These are the very words that we shall see in the book with the encyclical every time. Liberty, 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 everywhere. We will always stand together. Wasn't that the theme of, 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 of Obama? 
Huh? What did he say? Together we can. Here we say, together we stand. It doesn't, it doesn't matter the, 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 the acronyms are not, it still stays the same thing. So, it, so that is the symbol of the sun that proves that they are subord subordinate or subservient to the king of, of Babylon. And they, they are today shown to be a very good people. And they, they rule in a trio. There is the, the white folk, if you like. Then you have the black folk, who is the head of the Jesuits, who is also called the general. But he doesn't like the name black folk. I, I'm going to show you in the future lecture when he says himself that I, I am the neck. I am the neck. The Pope is the head. I am the neck. And the, the rest are the body. Question. The neck and the head and the body. Who is in control? Because the neck is the one that should tell the head what to give the body, because it can rock. It's interesting. He says it openly. Well, then we can have the Inquisition, the ones in charge of black. Then, the, but then they have to put on black, as you can see there. So when the other, uh, the other died, this came in. And again, this general was elected, and the name of Inquisition changed. It was no longer called Inquisition because it was horrendous to call it Inquisition. No, 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 the church has changed. Let's call it Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. And that is more dangerous, in fact. Because there, the Inquisition was responsible for heretics. But now it has gone into doctrine. The other one was physical, now it is doctrinal. So we are the ones that check the doctrine which you believe. When Pope Francis came in, Luke Mario Bidondio, this was the main, and they had to sit down. The Jesuits had to sit down. Uh, by the way, they are choosing a Pope. How do they choose the Pope? They go into what they call a conclave. Now, in Latin, conclave, from the word conclave, conclave, which means to lock with the king. Are you getting it? Yeah. So to lock with the king. So they lock them inside a chapel to such that no one else knows what is happening except what they know, what they are doing. And they are bound to secrecy of what happens inside there. So... The, but the black folk is also chosen the same way. They cut and see. And finally, uh, 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 this one, Adolfo Nicholas, transferred to, to a, a new one called. Uh, uh, what is this? Hmm? Arturo. Father Arturo Sosa. And the, he himself was there because the Jesuit, because now we are having a Jesuit folk. So he's a, 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 a Jesuit sitting as a white pope. So now we have a Jesuit pope with a, with a black pope who's a Jesuit. So now the whole entire papacy is ruled by the Jesuits alone. So this is the one. And the conclave that, that was done. And now the head of the congregation of the doctrine of the faith he is now Victor Manuel. Yes, the, 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 the Pope uh, appointed him. So there we have now the rulership of the system. Huh? Let me just end with this. I want to read this so that you go with this in mind. The book, The Great Controversy, it tells us exactly what this order is all about. I like the old edition. 
Throughout Christendom, Protestantism was menaced by so many people. It was hard to fight with Protestantism. The first triumphs of the Reformation passed, rose on the new forces, hoping to accomplish its destruction. At this time, the order of the Jesuits was created. The most cruel, unscrupulous, and powerful of all the champions of Popper. I like the way the spirit of prophecy chooses the words. The most cruel, unscrupulous, and powerful of all the champions of Popper. So who is the top? Jesus. 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 And what was the symbol? Sons. Sons. Can it all from every artist's time and human interest, due to end of natural affection, reason and voices for the same, they knew no rule, no time, but that of their order, and no duty, but extend its power. The vision of Christ has enabled its adherents to meet danger and endure a suffering, and is made by cold heart, toil, and poverty to uncouple the ban of truth in the face of wrath, the dungeon, and the sacred. Now, I want you to speak about this. Christ is method, the gospel, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because, for it is the power of? And to salvation. God and salvation. So they were not ashamed. They were willing to go to the dungeons. The band do anything. Did you know that these guys copied the entire system, system and made their people to adhere to the like system. things as the Christians are in the world? To combat the forces of Christianity, Jesuitism dispatched its followers with a fanaticism that enabled them to endure like dangers, not like the other one. And to oppose to the power of truth all the weapons of deception. Are you seeing now what is the best way of carrying the weapons? Don't fight. Join them. No. Join them. Change your weapons. No longer come in the other way. That's why the Jesuit order in 1775, as we shall see, was banned. Now, banning, according to the Oka, does not mean stopping. No, it means take underground. When you are evil, we ban you, we take you underground. That's the word we use on the surface. When you are good, we resign you. But you still go underground. Does it make sense? You are not really gone. No. You still work, but underground. So they had the point of deception. So they never came back again the way they were. When the Jesuit order was banned, they were in 1773. The completeness was in 1775. Then later, they went to America. As we shall see, the general himself they were, he was predicted to have died. He was shown to the people he's dead, put in a coffin, taken to, to Castella San Angelo, then later taken to the Church of the Jesu. They buried him there. But it was an empty coffin with, a, with another thing because the general himself had sailed on the ship and had gone to America. And he's the one who made his, he, he's the one who made gathered a group of Freemasons and gathered them into a room and made them to sign the independence. That's why you notice that the Bible tells you that America was this beast which came up, out, it never fall, came up, out, but speak as a dragon. And the only way a, a nation can speak is through legislation, through its writing. That means Originally, the writers knew that the idea was we are going to be 
this, but let us first put something else. Later, they come up and they speak exact dragon in it. And we shall notice that even the, weap the weapons were changed, the, 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 the shift from Constantinople take it to the White House. And that house was the house of a Jesuit was, who was called Andrew White, who, sell, who sent Christopher Columbus to go and explore that land, and Christopher Columbus established it, and it was called Andrew White's house, which later became the White House. And there is Mary, and we shall all look at this. So they now knew, and this entire theology was acted in a movie. You know movies, uh, the Jesuit is mouthpiece. The Jesuit is ordered mouthpiece is the is Hollywood. They cannot speak. They will si they simply act a movie. They involve their fellow Jesuits wherever they are. That's the next plan. Then for them, they know what to do. And they acted it in a movie called Coming to America. Here was a black king. He went to America to find for himself a, a bride. And then he would come back and rule with him. And why specifically America? This is the beast the nation. We should go for it. And that's why that movie gained a lot of respect and, and, and at the box office it was the, the supreme one because it had the theology that proves that Rome has now found a new bride, a new system uh, where it can now work from Constantinople, go to Rome. Now we have uh, go to America. Now America and Rome the two legs. That's where they're now best. We can, we can now connect very well. That is the principle they use. The weapons change. We are no longer using force. No, let's go down underground, use education, come up, come out back again in the form of Jesuit education, Jesuit theater in movies, use farming, go down into their, what do they need? Supply their needs, but under this, you spy on them. So they use the aid and everything to spy and see what you do. So they'll give you aid, money for, for aids, money for this, but under this is how they're spying to see how do you operate and how do you all, do all these things. That's why we are supposed not to rely upon any, any money that doesn't come from the people of God. Anything that is said to us, that God uses only his. This mindset of saying, let us go to the, to the heathens to help us build God's house. God wants to be lifted himself. The, Assyria, the, the Israelites did it. The, the, the ark went into the Assyrians. They got, the, sorry, the Israelites did it. The ark went into the Assyrians and it caused problems to them. They brought it and left somewhere. Then the ark came. The Israelites found the ark had come. And there it is in the camp. They said, wow. So they escorted it. Pushed by a cart. And, and the horses, they were following it. And God, and God said, excuse me. Don't you know the principle by which you're supposed to operate? You, the Assyrians don't know me. But for you know me, now the ark has come into the, the camp. Lift it as supposed to be. They just escorted it and the animals were carrying it. It's on the very flat surface, it slipped. But when it was coming through the mountain, it's not a slip. And everyone and all the Hebrews, now this, uh, this man comes to hold on it and he was struck dead. And they knew that no, we are supposed to hold it. The Levites, please do your work. Lift as it's supposed to be. You know what is right. Why don't you do it? He who knows what, what the good to do, if you do as it not to him, it is sin. They knew what to do, but they never did it. And they had, after they did what was right, it, it was gotten. We know that God is lifted by us who know him, not the world. Why do we allow the world? to build for God? Why do we allow the world to do things for Christ? Christ wants to be lifted by his people, not by the heathens. We know what is right. 
we ought to do it. May God help us. And we shall continue from there. Thank you very much. Let's pray. Thank you. Our Lord and our God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessed us this morning to enlighten our minds to see what is happening in the world. We don't have the eyes to put these things together, but if but you can bring all these things and show, show them to us. Thank you. And as we continue to learn, may you inspire ministers today. We want to dedicate them that are going to speak. But please, Lord, put your words in their, in their mouth and give them the breath that comes from above and the inspiration that they may speak what comes from above. Please, Lord, give us also the mind to understand as we are being taught that we may get this food that will help us to live in this world of sin. Help us to distinguish between right or wrong. Give us a teachable heart that we may learn and be able to discern what is right from what is wrong. We, we dedicate all the activities that will take place today and, and those who are preparing, those who are moving, who are, those who are doing everything. Let it be, be done in the spirit of Christ and let your glory keep shining within our hearts and within our eyes and within our, and our lips and let us only speak and see and hear what comes from you. We have prayed all this in Jesus' name.